need a friend. He made a believer. He made a believer. Believer out of me. He made a believer. Believer out of me. Now I know which way to go when I need a friend. He made a believer. Believer out of me. He made a believer. Believer out of me. Now I know which way to go when I need a friend. Believer out of me. Now I know which way to go when I need a congregational hymn. Amen. Amen. Jesus 
us. Oh, what a wonderful shout out. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing glory, glory. Glory to the new born King Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child! Talking about Jesus, Mary's baby, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all He brings. Listen to the angels sing Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king Listen. He was heralded by the angels Born in a lowly manger Joe's virgin Mary for his mother Joseph for his earthly father. Three wise men traveling from afar. Guided by that shining star to see Jesus, Jesus. Where he lay in a manger full of hay. Yeah, Jesus. 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 Oh, what a wonderful child. I'm talking about Jesus, Mary's baby. Jesus. So lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory. By the angels born in a lowly manger. God chose Mary for his mother, Joseph for his earthly father. Now, three wise men traveling from afar were guided by that shining star to see Jesus, Jesus. Where he lay in a manger full of hay. Yeah, Jesus. Come on, help us sing. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Yeah, Jesus. Mary's baby. So lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Glory, glory, glory to the new born King. Well, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope. All he brings, listen to the angels sing. Glory, 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 glory to the new born king. Come on, help us say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Right there, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful 
talking about Jesus, Jesus. y'all. Jesus, so lonely, meek and mild. Yeah, new life, new hope to all he brings. Won't you listen, listen, listen to, to the angels sing the glory, 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 glory. glory. can't sing this song this morning. Only if you've been redeemed, you got something to praise God for. Amen. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. He was made sin for us who knew no sin. Thank you. Praise God for Jesus. Therefore, it's at the cross where we met him, where we first saw him. All right, the scripture taken from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Praise God for Jesus. We thank God for his word. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is a generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king? He is the king strong and mighty, the king mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You may be seated. We will now have our offering. It is written in his word how we ought to be obedient to God and how he directs us. I thank God for Jesus this morning. Thank him for the offering. And um, Brother Slade, are you going to pray? Are you with me? Too? Father God, we thank you for this offering this morning. We thank you and we pray that it all was given to your glory and to your honor. We pray, God, that it will be used as you have so desired it to be in the building up of your kingdom on earth. God, we pray that you will bless us even the more, to give even more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Help us to be obedient to your commands. 
for it's probably part of your commandment is your word that we be obedient in everything and we thank you who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we can hear his word and he gives us a strength to be obedient to his word in the name of jesus we do pray amen so far we're going to prepare our hearts to receive the word as the choir inspire us ignite us get us going to give praise to God and be receptive to the word of God we thank God for the communion this morning and in the scripture there the scripture say let a man examine himself let us examine ourselves God that we be prepared to receive your word and rightly receive it and apply it to our lives in Jesus name we do pray amen Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. I heard two. Normally, if I'm preaching, I say, I need three people, not two. I know the word says where two or three are gathered, but I need a few of us that are in the building today to just say, thank you. Come on, I heard one. Let's try it again. The word of God says, here's your chance now. Here we go. Watch this now. The word of God says where two or three, two or three touch and agree. That he's in the midst. That's the whole scripture. But I need this morning, I need three or four people to just say thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. How many of you want to tell God thank you for all he's done? Come on, tell him thank you for all you've done. Y'all pray for us as we go through this. Put your hands together. If I never see another day, if I never see a smiling face, if I never breathe another breath or take another step, I want to say thank you. If I never speak another word, if I never sing another song to be heard, if I never see another sight or take another bite, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. All that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know, know that you're able. I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done to so far. All that you've done in my life. Thank you for being the God that being you are. Awesome God that you are. Thank you for food, for food on, my table. on my table. I know that my you're God able. Is able. I want to say thank you. If I never see another day Come on, put your hands together If I never see another smiling face If I never breathe another breath Or take another step I want to say thank you Thank you for all that you've done thus far Thank 
you for all that you've done us Thank all. you for being the God that you are. The awesome God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know you are able. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. Lord, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being the God that you are. None like you know. Thank you for food on my table. Food on my I table. know that you My able. God is I able. I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. All that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for food on my table. Food on my table. I know that you no, are you able. I just want to thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. All that you've done in my life. Thank you for being the God that There's you are. There's none like you, Lord, no, no. Thank you for food on Put my food table. on my table. I know that you, know you are able. I just want to thank you. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. For all that you've done in my life. Thank you for being. God that you are mighty and awesome God yes you are thank you for food you put on food my on my table I know I that know you're able. able I just want to thank you thank you for being the God that you are thank you for all that you've done thus far thank you for being the God that you are being the God that you are thank you for food you put on food my on table. my table I know I that you are Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. Well, we praise God again this morning. Amen. How of you? How many of you just know this morning? Amen. To say, just say thank you to the Lord. Amen. For another week, another day, another day's journey that He has blessed us with. And we worship him and praise his holy name. Let's prepare, amen, as we place our hearts together to pray. As we prepare ourselves to receive the word of the living God. Father, it is in Jesus' name that we come again this morning, first of all, just to say thank you. Lord, you have brought us to this place again. A place, Lord God, where we can come in and express our gratitude to you. You tell us in your word that if we don't praise you, the rocks will cry out. But God, I thank you that we have made up in our mind that we're going to give you what's due you lord thank you father for another day a day god we've never seen and we will never see this day again but it is the day you've made and we will rejoice and be glad within it father we acknowledge your presence is in the place your word said where your presence is there is a fullness of joy and at your right hand there is pleasure forevermore so God, one come for one thing and one come for another. But we all come to be fed from you. You said in your word that my sheep, they know my voice. Stranger, we shall not follow. So I thank you, God, that you have led us to this place. A place, an atmosphere, God, where your worship and your praise is in the air. And so God, your word said if you would be lifted up you would do all the drawing draw our hearts today God closer and closer to you thank you God for every person who's made their way to the building and even for those that would hear the word through internet or hear the word Lord God through you too we pray in Jesus name that the word would quicken all of us cause us to continue on running towards Lord God the things you have ordain us to do now father i pray in the name of jesus that as we stand before your people 
We pray, God, that you hide us behind the cross. Lord, I pray that it would be less of me, more of you. We yield today, God, ask you to stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. God, bring back to our remembrance all the things that you have spoke to us in private that we can share with them publicly. And I honor you and I praise you, God, for how the word will change hearts. For the word truly is a lamp to our feet, a light unto our pathway. We hide it within our heart that we shall not sin against thee. And we just give your name the glory, the honor, and the praises. God, we count it done, and it is so. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And let God's people say amen. Amen, amen. Well, we first give God the honor and give God the glory this morning. For truly, he's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our protector. He's our guide. And we worship him for who he is. We thank God this morning for our wife, amen, First Lady Choice, Marilyn Miranda Choice. Praise God for what God has ordained her to do. And all that she will do, amen, in his name. Thank God for Reverend Staten, amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Staten, for your support and your help. We praise God for our deacons, amen. We thank you, amen, for your support and help. Thank God for our trustees. Did y'all see Brother Eddie this morning? Brother Eddie is clean as a tack, amen. That brother is clean as a tack, amen. So we praise God for him this morning, amen. I'm telling you, that brother is clean as a tack, man, amen. <laughs> we praise God for him this morning. Thank God, amen, for our urchins. Come on, we can have fun, amen. Thank God for our media ministry, and thank God for this choir, amen. I don't know about y'all, amen, but I'm inspired by y'all. I really am. Amen. Mrs. Clark, amen. There is no excuse. There's no excuse, amen, for anybody to say they can't do what God has asked them to do. There's no excuse, Ms. Clark, amen. So thank you this morning for your, amen, obedience, amen. And did y'all hear, <laughs> huh? I'm saying there's no excuse for anybody to make an excuse that we can't do because we, we see you doing, amen. And did y'all hear Brother Steve back there? Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Amen. That's under the direction, amen, of Reverend Brown, amen, our new musician, amen. That's under his direction, amen. And so we praise God for them, amen. I want to thank God for everyone, amen, that's working behind the scenes, amen. Some of you are doing things, amen, that no one know you're doing, amen. So I want to thank you, amen, publicly, amen, for the private, amen, service you're doing here at Carriage, amen. All of us can do something. But all of us can't do everything, amen. And, but I praise God that, amen, that we're doing something this morning. Anybody can quit, amen. Anybody can give up, amen. But God has called us to be a people that would run and not get weary, walk and not faint, amen. Thank you, Sister Quandra, again this morning to make sure that everyone that came in the building, temperature is right, amen. Everybody's temperature is right, amen, this morning. So we don't have to be, a, we don't have to be afraid, amen. Thank God for Sister Quandra, amen for her being on the scene, amen, and being on post every Sunday morning, amen, to make sure that we're in a safe environment. Amen. You to have your Bibles, turn me over to the book of Colossians. Colossians, the first chapter. I want to start at the 15th verse, go to the 18th verse. Colossians, the first chapter, starting at the 15th verse and go to the 18th verse. And I want to talk this morning from a subject matter, the firstborn. The firstborn, that's what we want to talk about this morning, the firstborn. My brothers and sisters, as an overachiever, an overachiever quest in life is to do better than expected, achieve more than the standard, and strive to become number one in whatever environment or position they are obtained. When studying the character traits of an overcomer, many who have this mindset has a few things in common who sets out always to be first in whatever they do. First thing, an uh, overcomer, they many, many times they sign up to do, many th do more than one thing, meaning an overcomer sometimes is a multitasked person. They have many things going on uh, at one time, amen. They're just not one-dimensional person. 
overcomers sometimes put off doing things, put off, put, put off doing some things if they believe it's not going to be done right. That's what an overachiever would do. And also an overachiever, amen, they downplay their accomplishments. Uh, and, and, and it's tough for them to receive a compliment. Now, y'all hear me when I tell you this. Overachievers, amen, sometimes they downplay it. And it's hard for them to sometimes receive a compliment. Most overachievers are very fearful of failing. And they believe that failure is a setback that makes them appear weak and not under control. However, we know according to the book of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, the 16th verse, word of God says it this way, for a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the weak shall fall into mischief. Solomon helps us, or he suggests to us as believers to understand because we are, as a people are born into sin, we are going to fall. No matter how much we strive sometimes to be number one and we strive to be in first place, we are going to fall. But Solomon says in this scripture that when the just man falls, the problem is not him falling, but the solution is that he will always rise up again. Now, thanks of God, that's good news this morning. Because some of you that's sitting up under my voice, amen, you have found yourself to be an overachiever, meaning that you found yourself to always want to be number one at everything that you do. Oh, I wish I had some help in the house. But every now and then when you strive to be number one, you're going to find, amen, some setbacks. You're going to fall. You're going to find that you're going to fall, but you can be, you can be encouraged this morning. The fall is no problem. The fall, amen, is, is based upon life opportunities to let you understand that you and I can't do this about ourselves. But the greatest thing about the fall is, is that the just man will get back up, amen, and do the things that God has ordained him to do. Yes, you remember, amen, that old fairy tale Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty back again. And when I think about that this morning, amen, I think about, amen, those king horses, no king men was trying to mend that, that the Humpty back to the place that he would be first. But the problem is, amen, it wasn't the fall of Humpty Dumpty, amen. It wasn't that far Humpty was broken in pieces. The, far, the problem was Humpty had put his, his, his situation in the wrong person's hand. If you put your situation in God's hand, when you fall, God guarantees that we will be a people that will rise up again. Are y'all with me this morning? And so when we think about that this morning, we think about the firstborn. We know, amen, according to the scripture, that it was God's plan. And it was God's, amen, will from the foundation of the earth that God's original plan for man is that we would be first. Bible says it this way in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse, amen. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominions over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and over the earth and over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. When we look at this word, amen, dominion. The word dominion in the Hebrew language, it really represents to rule. Meaning that God has ordained you and I, amen, from the foundation of earth, that we would be rulers. Meaning that we would be first at everything that we do. However, we know that sin came in. And when sin came in, sin caused us as people of God to stop being people that would look at life as an overachiever. But look at life, amen, just to get by, amen, and do our bare minimum at many, on many occasions. Why do you think sometimes it's hard for you and I to motivate ourselves to go forward and do the things that God has ordained us to do? Because we live in this sinful body, and this sinful body causes you and I not to aspire for the greater things in God. I wish 
wish I had some help in this room this morning that you would just make up in your mind that God has called you and I out, amen, to be overachievers. He's called us out, amen, to be excellent in everything we do, amen. He called us out, man, that we would be people, amen, that would do greater works because he goes to the Father. But because of sin, yes, yes. sin makes us believe that we, are, we can't do it. But I'm glad to know this morning the word of God tells me that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Meaning that when I find myself in a situation where sin is trying to come against me and tell me I can't go far. And I cannot be in that first place that God would have me to be. I cannot be in that first position that God has called me out to be. I can rebuke that and tell that that's a lie from straight from the hell. God says, amen, I have given you, amen, dominions over the fish of the sea. And over the birds of the air. So when God created man, he created man with the intent to be an overachiever and to walk in his kingdom with the mindset of the first with position, with power, and with promise. And that leads us this morning to our text. Paul writes to the church at Colossians. And in his letter, he addressed himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Brothers and sisters, you've got to look at that prophetically because many, many times, amen, people say they have a call upon their lives. But you have to ask them, where did the call come from? Because if God has truly called a person, that person is going to do what God has ordained them to do. No matter if the storm or the wind or the rain come, they're going to still stand and believe by faith that God has told them to go forward in him. And so Paul says that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And those who walk as an, in the apostle anointing comes to perfect the saints of teaching them to grow and become mature followers of Jesus Christ. As an apostle, Paul prays for the church, giving thanks to God for the, for the faith and the love they show towards one another by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And according to the text, amen, Paul prayed, amen, his, he prays, amen, amen, the word of God says he prayed that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He prayed that they would walk worthy of the Lord, full, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good works and increasing in the knowledge of God. And he prayed that God would strengthen them with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. That sounds like a good prayer to me this morning because he covers all bases, amen, when he prays for the church. And you may ask the question, Pastor, what do you pray for us when you're in your time of prayer? Saints of God, I'm praying that we as a people will be filled with the knowledge of God's will, with spiritual, amen, understanding. I'm praying that we will walk worthy of, of the Lord, full, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good works and increasing in the knowledge of God. And guess what, saints of God? I'm praying for your strength, amen, that you will be strengthened with all might according to the glorious power for all patience and long suffering. Come on, saints, with joy, amen. I praise God this morning that God wants you and I to be a people that will be filled with joy. Hey, I made up in my mind. Hey, I made up in my mind. I've just made up in my mind. Amen. I'm going to put myself in places. I'm going to be around people. I'm going to do things that bring me joy. Amen. If I can't find no joy in it, I'm going to disconnect myself from it. Amen. And I'm going to put myself around people. I'm going to place myself around places. Amen. And I'm going to find some positions that will bring me joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when you get the joy of the Lord, amen, life will turn, take a spin for you. And you'll see that the things that you think that are working against you is really working for you. I wish I had some help this morning. I wish I had one or two people that would say, Pastor, I can testify this morning. That very thing that I thought was working against me, when I looked at it, amen, out of the, in the lens of the eyes of God, God showed me that it's working for my good. So therefore, Paul prays. And Paul's prayer would, be, would, would not be only called, called the saints to see themselves as first. 
But Paul would describe Jesus as the firstborn who was first to be born of God. He was not only first to be born of God, but he was first to be born over creation. And he was first, the firstborn over the church. What are you saying, Pastor? Amen. Look, o- look over in Colossians, amen, the first chapter. At the 15th verse, the Bible said, Paul said it this way in the scripture. He says, he is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Oh, my God. And one, amen, of the, one of the signifying challenges of most people when they face it, they face, amen, knowing who the creator is. Paul says in this scripture, he describes Jesus as the image of the invisible God. The word image implies Jesus was like God. Are y'all with me this morning? And that's why it's so important that we as people of God get to know who Jesus is. Amen. When you get to know who Jesus is, you will know who God is. Because if you see Jesus, you see God. If you see God, you see Jesus. Amen. And that's why children of God, when we say that we're born again believers and we're filled with God's Holy Spirit, something about me ought to look like Jesus every now and then. Are y'all with me this morning? Every now and then. Amen. It ought to be something about me. Maybe my smile. Amen. Maybe my haircut. Amen. Maybe, amen, the love that I show. It ought to be something about me that show you that I look like Jesus. Why? Because he was was made in his image and made in his likeness and he blew breath on the inside of me. That was the first breath. breath. The second breath was the day that I accept Christ as my personal Savior. He born me all over again. Meaning he blew in my nostrils all over again. And when he blew in my nostrils, likeness came on the inside of me. And the way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. And the way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. I looked at my hands, and my hands was new. I looked at my feet, and they were us too. Amen. God did a great work on the inside of my life because he made me in his image. And he made me in his likeness. And so Paul says that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Jesus is the firstborn because he is like God, i.e., the firstborn chronologically, which refers primarily to position or rank. So, Pastor, what are you saying this morning? When I say that Jesus is the firstborn, I'm saying that Jesus is number one in ranking. Are y'all with me this morning? We look at the polls, amen. We look at the college reviews. Everybody, amen, that plays any type of sport, they attain to be number one at the top. Why? Because number one represents, amen, that they are the best at what they do. Can I explain something to you this morning, saying of God can I let you know something that Jesus is the best in everything he do amen he was the best when he took two fish and five loaves of bread and it fell five thousand he was the best amen when he raised Lazarus from the grave are y'all with me he was the best amen when he laid his hand on that man and he became be able to see he was the best when he got up out the grave and he had all power in his hand. When Jesus got up, amen, it showed that he was the best that we could ever ask for. So, Pastor, what are you saying? St. John, the first chapter, the 12th and the 13th verse, it said it this way. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who was born not of blood, nor, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? What I'm saying this morning, I know that we're in a moment where we'll celebrate, amen, and we'll celebrate, amen, because of what Jesus, he was born. But I want to let you know, we ought to celebrate because we celebrate because he is the best, amen. He He's the best that you and I could ever know. He's the best, amen, that we could ever come in contact. He is the best because he was the firstborn. Secondly, you need to put in your notes. If you're taking notes this morning, we ought to celebrate this morning, not only because he was the firstborn of God, but he was the firstborn over creation. Look what the scripture says in the 16th and the 17th verse. It says, for by him, all things was created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thorns or dominions or principalities or powers 
all things was created through him and for him. 17th verse says, and he is before all things. And in him all things consist. So Paul, he describes Jesus as the divine preemacy. When I say divine preemacy, I'm saying that he is supreme, the supreme ruler over all creation and the new creation. We know about super, or super we, we know about the supreme court, amen. All of us this morning, we understand in the world we live in, we have a supreme court. Well, the supreme court is the highest court that we can go to to get a law passed. Well, can I tell you something this morning, saints of God, that God, amen, allowed Jesus to be above the supreme court. Why? Because he's high and he's lifted up. And that's why he said in his word, if I be lifted up, I'll do all the drawing. I have more power than any laws in the land that you live in. That's why when you lift me up, amen, I'll do the draw. The Bible said that he was, he, he, he was all he was over all creation in the heavens, amen, the earth, the visible and invisible, and where, where the thorns and dominions are principalities. God said the, the scripture says all things was created through him and for him. So, Pastor, what are you saying this morning? I am saying according to the word of God, amen. When I see Jesus' life, he's not only firstborn, but he is firstborn over all creation, meaning that Psalms 140. 148 and 13 says, it says, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is supreme. That's what the word of God said. His name alone is supreme and his glory is above all the earth. So, Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? I am saying to us, saints of God, as we celebrate this hour, we ought to celebrate not only just because he was born, but we ought to celebrate that he was born for purpose. He was born because he was first in ranking and he was born because he has superiority over everything. Are y'all with me this morning? And that's why there's no partiality in God. God loves me the same way he loves you. He shows no favoritism. Why? Because, amen, he created you in your, his image like he created me. And no matter what nobody tells you, God's favor belongs to you like it belongs to me. Amen. And wh why do his favor belong to you like it belongs to me? Because God, amen, was first over all creation. That means that no matter where you go and no matter what land you go in, God's favor will rest upon your life. Ain't that what he says in Deuteronomy 28th chapter? He says you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed going in, and you'll be blessed going out. I wish I had some help in the house this morning that no, no matter where God places your feet at, he'll put his favor on your life. And when his favor is on your life, people got to, amen, treat you right. People got to love you. Why? Because if God be for you, oh, are y'all with me? Who can be against you? If God is on your side, amen, he will make your enemies at peace with you. And so we see in the scripture... That he was the firstborn. Amen. He's first over creation. But lastly, he's firstborn over the church. Amen. He's firstborn over the church. Look what the scripture said in the 18th verse. It says, and he is the head of the body. Amen. I know you thought, amen, they was the head, but he is the head. <laughs> the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That's what the scripture says. Now when Paul talks about the church, we know the church literally represents the ecclesia. It's the call out. You and I are the church. This is just a building that we come to. Can I get a witness in here? This ain't the church, thanks of God. We are the church, so meaning that when I go in the supermarket, the church is being represented. When I go to the gym, the church is at the gym. My God, when I go home, the church is at home with me. Are y'all with me this morning? So he is first over the church, meaning that when he says he's first over the church, he's over the body of believers who believe that Jesus is Lord. I wish I had some help in the house, amen. I wish I had one or two believers this morning that you believe that Jesus is Lord. So Paul explains to the body, he says what makes him the head of the body uh, body is that he, he's the head of those who believe. That's the key point. He cannot be head over something that will not believe. Even though he's over it, amen, he cannot have jurisdiction over it because they do not believe. What are you saying, Pastor? The Bible said it this way in the book of St. John, the 11th chapter, the 25th and the 26th verse. It says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection 
and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall, have, shall, shall he live. And, whatsoever he, and whosoever liveth in, and believeth in me shall never die. He says, believe on thee. Now, you got to catch this thanks of God because when I looked at that word, I investigated that scripture so dearly. And I thought about, amen, when Jesus talks about his life and he talks about believing, what Jesus is basically saying, those who believe in God has a different energy than the world have. Were well, y'all with me this morning? That's why I told Miss Clark this morning, she's 91 years old, sitting up here singing the songs of Zion. She shows us that God, even at 91, she still has the energy to do what God has ordained her to do. Y'all with me this morning? And what that means, that means there must be some belief down on the inside of her. And if she has belief on the inside of us, we have no excuse after children of God. You don't tell me that you're tired. You don't tell me that you're burnt out. Don't tell me, amen, that you're wore out. Because if you are a believer, God has placed his energy on the inside of you. And pastor, what makes you so excited? What makes me because every time I believe, I get an energy on the inside of me. It's like an infusion on the inside of me that God gives me the ability to run and not get weary and walk and not, not, not faint. So as a result of Jesus' resurrection and his life, we live again. Pastor, what are you saying? When I say we live again, saints of God, God has placed his energy on the inside of you and I. Some of you ain't caught it yet. I'm saying that God has put his energy in you like he's put his energy in me. That's why the word of God said, ye that waits upon the Lord, he'll renew our strength. What he's saying, I'll give you more energy. I'll give you more, amen, desire. I'll give you more motivation to do all but fail. So when he says in the scripture, he is the head of the body, the church, who is in the beginning was the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may have preeminence. What God is basically saying, as long as you and I continue on being believers, that he will continue on causing us to do everything but fail. And so that tells me this morning that when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that God has done for me, it causes something on the inside of me to quicken on the inside. It causes an energy to take place that God can be glorified. And what I'm saying this morning, saints of God, because Jesus was the first birth, amen, he has placed us in a system, amen, that no matter we live in a world where it's falling apart, but the word of God tells us, he that keeps his mind stayed on me, I'll give you perfect peace. What is he saying, pastor? He said, every time you think of my goodness, I'm going to give you the energy to continue on pressing towards the mark. And I know you get tired, and I know you want to throw in the towel, and I know, amen, you want to wipe your hands, but if you keep trusting and believing in God, God has a way of allowing you to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And if he lets you see the light at the end of the tunnel, he'll give you direction how to get to the end of the tunnel. So, Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? Well, my brothers and sisters, because we know and understand that Jesus is the firstborn, we can celebrate. That's all I'm saying this morning. We can celebrate because Jesus is first and the highest of all kings. How do you know that? Because the Bible says in Psalms 89 and 27, he says, I also shall make him my first firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. We can celebrate, amen, because Jesus is first in the kingdom of God. How do you know that, pastor? Because the Bible says, amen, in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, but, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto him. We can celebrate because Jesus' name is above all names. How do you know that, pastor? Because the Bible says in Philippians, the second chapter, the ninth through the eleventh verse, therefore God, amen, and we shall exalt his name bestowed upon us because his name is above all names and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So I make, can I make a suggestion to us this morning? I know that we're in the hour where we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. But can I tell you something this morning? You ought to celebrate because God is number one in our lives. Amen. And when he becomes number one in our lives, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, it shall always stand. And I thank God this morning that God's word is going to stand on my behalf. 
path, amen, when I go through the storm and when I go through the valley, he said, I am your shepherd, you shall not want. When I go, amen, find myself, amen, in a hard time, he says, you can speak to the wind and it shall be removed. When I find myself with sicknesses all over my body, he said in his word, I was wounded for your transgressions. I was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement was upon me for your peace and by my stripes, I'm healed. And so, saints of God, I celebrate this morning because he is the firstborn, meaning that he is number one in my life. And when he becomes number one in my life, whatever I put my hands upon, I shall prosper. That's why the word of God said, any man that put his hands upon the plow and look back, he's not fit for the kingdom of heaven. What God is trying to tell us, when you look back, you're not looking at me as number one. But when we keep our eyes on him, amen, he will bring us to the place that we need to be. And you know my story. Story, saints. I got to go there. That's why it's at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and all the burdens of my heart, they rolled away and it was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. What did you see, Choice? I saw that Jesus was number one and when you make him your Lord and your Savior, he has the power to do everything for fear. That's why the word of God says, lift up thy head, O ye gates, and be ye everlasting lift it up and the king of glory shall come in who is this king the lord got strong and mighty the lord got strong in battle he is the lord that will come in because he's number one in our life and i'm glad to know this morning i celebrate because he's number one he's number one over my life he's number one over my family's life he's number one in my ministry he's number one on my job he's number one in my marriage he's number one in my children's life. He's number one because he is the supreme roller and he all power in his hands. And so we thank God this morning for the firstborn. He's number one in rankings. Nobody can outdo him. Nobody can outlast him. That's why he says, amen, that all things has passed away Behold, all things are new. Yes. Why? Because I'm number one in your life. I don't care what you've done in your past, Warren. I have forgiven you for those things. Right. But I'm pressing you towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. I know that this is an hour where everybody is celebrating. But we celebrate differently as children of God. We celebrate not only his birth. We don't celebrate just his life. We don't celebrate just because he got up out of the grave, but we celebrate because he's our savior and he's our Lord and he lives on the inside of us. That's why we celebrate. So we praise God this morning for a moment of celebration. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. Amen. As we, amen, make this appeal. Amen. As we say every week, amen, we know that there may be somebody that could be somebody that may hear the word, do not know who Jesus is, who not made him Lord, who not made him Savior, who don't worship him for who he is. And that's okay if that's the plight you take. But I can remember the days when I wasn't saved. I tell people this story all the time, Brother Eddie. You know, when I wasn't saved, I couldn't sleep right in the bed. You know how your feet go at the bottom of the bed and your head go at the top of the bed? I would, only way I could sleep, I had to turn around opposite in the bed. That's how much sin I was in, saints. Now, now if y'all had known that about me, amen, when y'all was running me for the past, you probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't allow me to come in this place, amen. But I was a sinner. I tell anybody, I wasn't no church boy. I was doing whatever I wanted to do. You weren't going to tell me what I couldn't do. I was running as hard I could, as I could run. Yes. And I've told you the story of my mama. She's dead and gone. But I can remember her on that front porch, Sister Carl. I can remember her on that front porch praying and saying, Lord, I don't know what's wrong with my son. I don't know what's wrong with him, Quandra. I don't know what's going on with him, Zoe. 
But he's going to meet a man. And I was in the room, listening to her, Deacon Banks. I was listening to her while she prayed. And I said, yeah, if I meet him, I'll beat him up. Amen. She don't know what I'm packing. Amen. I'll beat him up if I meet him. And did I, little did I know, my mom was praying for my salvation. Because it was October the 27th of 1990, about 2.30 in the afternoon at Gardner Webb University, that Jesus stepped in. And watch this. Satan stepped out. When Jesus stepped in, Mrs. McIntyre, Satan stepped out. Now, Satan comes and knock on the door all the time. He said, I'm coming back to you, Warren. No, I said, no. We done changed, amen, location, the addresses, amen. We did, we had, we had a different suit on now, amen. We don't hang, hang out with you no more. He comes back all the time. That's why the word of God says he's like a roaring lion. He comes seeking who he may devour. He comes to you too like he comes to me. But you got to close the door, amen. And so I say this morning, amen, there's anybody in the room, Maybe somebody would hear this message, amen, through the internet. You're not saved. The Bible says, amen, that if thou confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says that whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. That word believe again, saints of God, if you want to have that energy that God gives you, you got to believe God. And so this morning, we want to give an opportunity. Amen. Maybe somebody in the room, you don't know who Jesus is. Maybe somebody in the room, you've taken a, a back step. Amen. This is your hour. This is your opportunity that you would know that Jesus is the firstborn. He's first in ranking. That's why he says in Philippians that he's given us a name that's above all name, that every name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess on heaven and in earth. He says he's given us a name that's above all name, meaning that Jesus' name, it ranks out every name that's in the earth. And if you're looking at any other name, thinking that name is going to help you, Jesus' name is the only name that can you help you and I. Because his name is in number one in ranking. And so this morning, we thank God for that. We thank God for that. Come on, let's pray. Father, thank you again this morning for an opportunity, God, to explain and teach your word. We thank you, God, for the hearts who have heard this morning. And we believe by faith that the word that we have spoken has not fell on deaf ears. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus that one plants, one waters, but you get the increase. God, you do the increase, God. I pray this morning for every vessel that's here at Carries. Lord, you know what they have need of. You know what they're going through. You know their ups and their downs. You know their strengths and their weaknesses. You know, God, their thoughts. You know their beliefs and their doubts. But God, we place them in your hands. And we know that your word says, you tell us in your word, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe upon him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God, I thank you, God, this morning, that as we come before you, you are God who supplies all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God, I pray this morning that you would not only increase our faith, but God, increase our belief in you. That's why you said in your word that all things are possible to them that believe. God, when we believe, Lord God, you give us the motivation and the energy, Lord God, to continue on running and not getting weary. And walking and not faint. I thank you, God, for this ministry. I thank you, God, for what you're doing here. I thank you, God, for every person, God, that's operating in ministry. I thank you for the choir, God. I thank you for the music minister, God. I thank you, God, for the ministers and the deacons and the trustees, God. I thank you for our urchers and thank you, God, for the sound ministry. Thank you, God, for the care ministry and the home to home ministry, mission ministry and every ministry that falls upon the sound of my voice. God, you know them all by name. I just pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that we will become the church, that church that will let our light so shine that men may see the work in us and you in heaven may be glorified. And God, I pray for every person who's lost their zeal to do the things you have 
ordained them to do. Whatever their interest may be, God, I pray you have the power to change their interests, place their interests back into the place where you first ordained them first, God. And I give your name the glory and the honor. I thank you, Lord God, that you said in your word that these bones, they will live. Because, God, we speak to the bones. We blow breath on the bones, God. We prophesy to the bones, God. We believe in the bones in the name of Jesus, God. Every bone, Lord God, that's assigned here at Caris, it shall live, God. It shall live to declare the works of the Lord. It shall do what you have ordained it to do, God. We speak it by faith. We believe it in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for it in advance, Lord God. We count it done because, God, your word says greater works that we shall do. Because, God, you go to the Father. Thank you for the word, God, that we stand on the word. The word is a lamp. The word is a light unto our pathway. We thank you for the Obadiahs, Lord God, that you place in this building, God. Those, God, even in a dry season, is willing to take a risk to feed, Lord God, the prophet. That's willing to take a risk, God, to feed the prophet in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for that. I thank you, God, for the atmosphere. I thank you for the liberation that you, you said, who the Son have set free, we're free indeed. You said where the Spirit of the Lord is. God, you said there is liberty. So, God, I, I speak liberty in this house. I pray in the name of Jesus against re religion and rebellious, but I speak liberty in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of religion and rebellious, but I speak liberty in this house, God, that freedom would move and operate like never before. We honor you and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, just lift up your hands and worship him. Come on, just lift up your hands and worship him. Just worship him. Come on, can we just worship him before we leave? Come on, just lift up your hand. It's a sign of surrendering. When you lift up your hands, it means, God, I'm, I'm surrendering all to you. That's what that means. I just lift up your hands and worship him. Come on, just worship him. Come on, come on, just worship him. Come on, just worship him. My sister, I speak life. You are the head and I am the tail. Speak life, speak life, speak life, speak life. Speak life. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live in life. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, choir. Lord, have mercy. What a prophetic word. What a prophetic word. You shall live in life. Yes, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I speak life. You're gonna live, oh my brother. Let the song minister to your saints. I speak God. Let the song minister to you. You are the head and not the tail. You will prevail. I speak God. Don't give up the fight. Fight for your life. You shall live. You shall, you shall live and not die. I speak life. I speak life. You're going to live, oh, my brother, my sister. I speak life. You are the hill. You shall live and not die. Come on, let's do that one so we can sing to our soul. I speak. I, I speak life. You will live, oh, my brother, my sister. I speak life. You are the head. You are the head and not the tail. You will prevail. I speak life. Don't give up the fight, fight for your life. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. 
You shall live and not die. Come on, say that to yourself. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. Say it to yourself. Say to your spirit, you shall live. You shall live and not die. Thank you, choir. Come on, let's. Let's prepare our amen as we do our benediction. Thank you so much, choir. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. That's a beautiful song. Amen. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. Amen. The church needs energy. We need energy, saints. Amen. We really do. We need energy. Amen. God has called us out to be people. Amen. Of excitement. Amen. I'm not trying to compare ourselves to a basketball or football game but i'm telling you when you walk into this place and jesus is on the inside of you you'll have some energy hey man i may be old but i'm still okay man got energy amen ain't that right mother clark amen i may be older but i still got energy yes. amen 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 come on let's get a benediction now may the grace of our lord and the sweet communion of this holy spirit let it rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, I pray you keep us, never to leave us. Watch over us, God. Go before us and tear down what needs to be torn down. Build up what needs to be built up. And God, we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise as we count it done. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I speak life, you are the name, oh my brother, my sister. I speak life, you are the head and not the tail, you shall prevail. I speak life, don't give up the fight, fight for your life. You shall live. You shall live and not die. You shall.